The Mohawk Council of Akuzasta invites you to stay updated and informed on their new social media sites. Like, add, and click Mohawk Council of Akuzasta on Facebook, Twitter, and now Instagram. Finding new ways to keep you updated, the Mohawk Council of Akuzasta. Thompson Oaks, Gujanola Yungyak, Sweskawelege, I'm a bear clan. Um, my sexuality, bisexual. Uh, yes, I'm Kit Thomas. I am 35, artist from Akwazasne originally. I'm a drag king, uh, an artist, a uh, free spirit. Hi, my name is Kevin Lazor. I'm 34 years old and I am from Akwazasne. My name is Adam White. I am 26 years old. I was born in Rochester, New York. Um, I'm Bear Clan. Ready? Okay. Yeah, I grew up five years, my first five years in Sni before I moved on to be to live in Ottawa actually. But my first five years I was a little adventure kid and nature boy, I guess you would say. I loved playing in the woods, I'd love pretending to be in spaceships and all that kind of stuff. And I was just a little adventurous little kid. All I did was uh, see if I could draw that comic, see if I could draw this comic. Yeah, got it, no problem. But she was like, try painting, and I'm like, eek. <laughs> Well, my childhood, it was a bit rocky. Um, good and bad parts to it. I did travel a lot. I learned new cultures. I grew up in Akwazasne. I went to school in Messina, but I also moved around. I lived in Jersey. I lived in Memphis, Tennessee. Um, I think I lived in Canada for a little bit here and there. Um, so it, it was not settled. Uh, I had a very unstable home life, but that turned around when I actually moved from Memphis, Tennessee to come back to Messina and graduated in 99. Okay, no, no problem. Sounds good. Thank you. Bye. Um, well, I had a really good childhood, you know, growing up in Sni um, with my, my mom, my two sisters, my dad. Um, we, we all got along really great, you know, I enjoyed um, everything about my childhood, really. I, I enjoyed, like, you know, normal kid riding on the bike like back in the 80s so on my bike around river road Hi. <laughs> um coming back up here i knew i had family up here but i didn't really know my family so coming up here was kind of like a whole nother like adjustment because i only known Rochester for so long and then moving up here it was such a different like trying it's like starting all over again you know <laughs> I didn't really know during high school if I was bisexual I like men and women it wasn't until I was about 22 years old when I actually it was in the rites of passage Oho logo ceremony that was brought down from a long time ago actually where you would be trans or you would go in the ceremony to turn into a man, a young man transitioned into a man in the ceremony. So it was actually during this ceremony when I, the message I took from that was I was bisexual. I like men and women is when I found out. I first started questioning, well not even questioning, just feeling different around age four. Um, I knew that when Whitney Houston came on, uh, I really liked watching the videos. I wasn't sure why, <laughs> but later on in life, um, I, it sort of developed and of course I kept it a secret because I wasn't quite sure what I was feeling because there was no word given to me or there was no support in my family. It wasn't talked about, you know, so I felt even more different um, and then it wasn't until I went to Jersey and then came back <laughs> in fifth grade, I went to Twin Rivers. But by then I had my own 
style. I was obviously different with my appearance. I had spiky hair, fringe leather jacket, acid wash jeans, and some British night um, high tops. And I walked into sixth grade where all the girls had the country dresses on and they're all prim and proper with long hair. And I was just like, ah, I don't fit in. I would, I would have to say I first started noticing that when I was um, really, probably like kindergarten, grade one, like a really young age, that's probably when like, like five, five years old, mostly hung out with the girls in my class and you know, you know, like house or something. I would be always like, you know, in the kitchen cooking or I'd have like put the play apron on and you know, and I would, I would get made fun for that. And I always thought it was just normal, I was just being myself and I would get made fun of, I would get picked on. There's some of my times at school, you know, I would get bullied a lot. And it was, um, it, was a tough, it, was, it was tough for me at that time. Well, at first, I didn't really know what gay meant, I guess you can say. It was just something like I knew I was like just different. You know, I just, I had this feeling that I was attracted to guys, but I just thought it was just the norm. You know, I never really thought it was so taboo and you were, you know, like I just thought it was normal and living in Rochester, like I was always the, the different one, like I always like stood out of the box, I always just did my own thing and I played with Barbies, I didn't play with G.I. Joe, you know. So I'd say I probably came out probably about a year and a half ago. My first person I actually told was my best friend Chrissy White. and. Very supportive, actually. She was actually proud that I came out to her first, and she was just so happy that I told her. And yeah, it was a big relief coming off my back, and I could breathe again, like because I was hiding this ever since Oh Logo that I found out I was only 22 years old, and it was a relief that I finally got to tell someone. And, and it was after that, you know, the word spreads. We're on the res, so Chrissy told my sister, and but I got. I'm glad she told someone close because when I told my sister, she was out ready for it. But it was cool, and everyone was actually very accepting in my family and close, and it felt good that everyone was still was still the normal life, and they still considered me the same Stephen as I was before. I would say it was the first family member would have been my cousin Natasha. I came back from school and so it was first year out of college and we were just driving around like we normally do and her cousin unfortunately had passed that year so we were bonding and I just felt comfortable and I just said hey guess what I'm, I'm gay and she was like her reaction was thrown off and I thought it was obvious because I had been to school already and people were just like obvious <laughs> but um she was the first family member I told and the first person that I trusted in the family, which it, it's hard to really trust anybody because, you know, you could lose certain family members or best friends and you just, well, you're not sure of their reaction. So I just took a chance because I was just ready and more confident in myself. And she actually accepted it. From there on, I just went back to school. I started coming out to more friends out there. Then I started coming out to more family members, my grandmother, my sister, you know, and the further, um, the further along the years, I was just building up this confidence and I was really okay with myself. You know, honestly, I don't know. <laughs> um, I, um, I went through a really hard time where I didn't actually come out till I was like 22, 23, and you know, I, I, at that time, like I was struggling finding myself. That's when I, I, I first start suppressing my feelings with alcohol. And I didn't, my, my sister, I talked to her like before, I was like, I'm, I'm gonna be doing this interview. And I, I asked her, I'm like, oh, I asked her what was her reaction to when I was gay. She's like, oh, I already, I always knew because every time like you, you were sober, you were just, yeah, see, I, cause I always played like this, you know, I had to change my way. I was more like put on this masculine shield. I had to be more, I couldn't be myself. And when I drank, I became like more sassy. I was like, oh, hell no. I was like different. I was, um, 
and that's what she's seen and then she's like why are you acting like that you know you're acting so different I, I, that was kind of me inside coming out through the alcohol i had more fun being drunk because i could be myself and not many people really cared because that was who i am who I am. I didn't really care what people thought of me at that time, so I always just kept drinking all the time and I drank a lot. Yeah, I got I got into an addiction with like drugs, alcohol. Um, but it, it didn't get it got really bad around 20, I would say like 2008 and this is the first time like I ever experienced with of drugs like but I didn't use drugs before. It was just more like the alcohol, so it was more of me when I, after I graduated high school, that's when I actually said, you know, I, I'm gay, you know? And my family knew, I thought they didn't know, and they're like, come on, no, Adam, we know, <laughs> you know? And so, yeah, I, I came out when I was in 11th grade. I was, uh... It was a pill addict, or what would you call it, opiate. I was addicted to opiates, I was addicted to any kind of pills, I would say. That was my downfall, was the pills. When I was 18, when I moved back to the res, when I told you I was lost in identity, couldn't fit in with groups, I didn't know who I was, I didn't have no sense of culture, no sense of traditions of my culture, no sense, I didn't have those ceremonies, didn't have the language, I didn't have the songs, I didn't know any of that when I moved back from Ottawa, just being a city boy. So coming back to not knowing anything and seeing all these people singing in traditional ways and doing traditional teachings, I didn't have that. I was a very depressed child, a very depressed um, teenager. I would st even say, you know, a very depressed 20-year-old. It just, it was, it was a hard thing to grasp because there wasn't an outlet. There wasn't a resource. Um, you know, you felt you felt different, but you weren't sure why. You felt like you were going to be shunned, not only from your community but your family, and that kind of like breaks your heart. So instead of feeling that, you'd rather just you know sit in silence with yourself and not tell anybody and go through that. Um, it was very painful. I, I look back at my childhood and a lot of high school, and like I didn't like it. But it grew, like I grew into the person because of the struggles. I think um, I've heard a lot of people say that if it wasn't for those struggles, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be who I am today, and I wouldn't be able to carry on that torch and help. Maybe like, you know, I have younger cousins that came out, and you know, friends that come up to me and say, "Because of you, I've come out." And I'm like, "What? You know, that's such an honor." I am. Um... It got really bad. I need to say, and then just mention my grandmother. I, you know, she, she was like my everything, and she had passed away in February. You know, third uh, February thirteenth, on my mother's birthday of all. You know, and um, she, um, like, after that, you know, just losing her, it became you know so much more pain for me, and I've. Um, I've drank a lot more after that. I've I've contemplated, com contemplated again killing myself, and I was in a really dark place. I wanted to end my life. Um, I was a cutter. Yeah, I would cut myself to ease the pain of being picked on in school and just being bullied. You know, it's wrong to bully someone for being who they are and it's just as simple as that you know you just don't do that kind of thing because you never really know what's going on in their mind and all I can say is just that it gets better and to stay strong so that rites of passage so it wasn't just I found myself too I or found that I was bisexual it was, I found my culture and language and songs through that ceremony too. And a higher power. I didn't believe in a higher power when I was my younger age. So if, it, it, that ceremony is what actually saved my life, I'd say. My uncle Weege, that he is gay too. And, and I kind of felt ashamed because he told me some stories that I heard stories that he used to be ashamed and or he went through a tough time coming out himself. So 
But then at the same time, he was my inspiration at the same time because he, is, he came out himself and he is his, his own person. So he was one of my main inspirations of coming out actually. I like to support myself by having supportive, um, very confident, very uh, like amazing people around me at all, at all times, uh, especially when dealing with issues like this. Uh, I know if I have um, spouts of depression, you know, it's inevitable. I can reach to like a cousin or my girlfriend or, you know, even support systems with like mental health who has helped me tremendously um, here in St. Regis. Um, I would say use that facility. They have so many resources. My grandmother. My grandmother, I, I miss her so much. She was my biggest supporter. And my mom. That yeah, was my grandmother. I, you know, I could, I could sit and talk to her about anything. And she was always, you know, I was telling me like I could do it, you know. Even if I could tell her about like, people picking on me in school and stuff, you know, she's like, I'm gonna go and yell at them or <laughs> she even yelled at the principal for me when I was sitting at the principal's office. So, you know, she was always my biggest supporter. The most supportive person in my life would have to be my mother. Even though from before, yeah, she I wouldn't want to say she wasn't accepting of it, it was just that she was brought up differently, but for her to turn her way of thinking around and, you know, it would have to be my mother and my friends. Been in my up to ever since I came home and I quit pills, I never touched pills, I don't even think of it, and like I could talk to you about it now and be comfortable at talking about my addictive ways, because I'm never going to go back to that way. I'm, I'm so empowered. I want to empower people too with this feeling of being myself. I want other people to be themselves too. And just empower them. To, don't be afraid to be yourself because I did the same and look at me now. I'm shining bright and life's good actually. I found actually a guy I love very much. My boyfriend for two years. We're going on two years April 10th so that's amazing. And we got two pets. We got a cat and dog. <laughs> we consider them like our kids. Look at, he just bought our cat, a freaking castle, I call it the capital. It's like a castle, cat castle. <laughs> and we just actually got a new puppy and we very much love him like a son, you know what I mean? Fabulous. Um, after I graduated, I got on a bus and I went to Brooklyn, New York. I studied graphic design and I lived in one of the best, most accepting cities in the world. Uh, the, the experience itself taught me to trust people to, it was okay to be gay. It was even better to have friends that were gay because they would take you out and show you new things. Um, I did learn some things from school, actually, academically, that I took further on in my career. I love myself so much more. You know, I've overcame those demons and I'm in a much better place. I don't think that so many things have came, came my way, you know, ever since I've became sober and I, I've, I stopped. I have an amazing job at Aquasesne TV. Um, I've released the negative in my life and I only observe the positive. I work at Yokisuta. I'm an activities director. I'm going to school to be a dietary aide. Um, working with them really makes me proud um, to help all others. Um, I love fashion. I got into modeling when I was younger. I think that was a thing that, you know, you, to, to have hobbies and to have something to fall onto and keep your mind focused and positive and you know, I have um, things to do, like I like painting, you know, I like to be outdoors and, you know, I just really get in, I really got into my uh, spiritual side too as well, which I believe had a major impact on me thinking positive when I was self-harming myself. I'd say I'm here for you. And if you need someone to talk to, come find me. I'm Stephen Thompson Oaks online. And if you need someone to talk to, please get a hold of me. Because I know how it is feeling. The feeling of fear, I guess it's the fear. The feeling of fear of not knowing what people are going to think of you. Being yourself. So I know that feeling. I felt that. And I'm sure a lot of us in the community have felt that too. Of not being yourself. That fear of 
showing the true your true self. You're hiding your true self. So I just say the time the time will come when you you are ready and and when you're ready to shine bright, shine on because I did the same and I'm happy right now and I'm I, mean, I got a happy life all around. You know, I I would say don't rush it. Really explore out there because. I, if I didn't go to New York City, if I didn't travel, I mean, you don't necessarily have to travel, but for me, it was something I was accustomed to because we were always moving around and I felt comfortable to, to do that. Um, I would say experience a little bit of life. Um, if you want to travel, that's amazing because I, I say you won't ever miss out. There's always something out there that's gonna teach you a lesson. Yeah, I, I would say definitely. And find a, a support system around you that's really going to like nurture and kind of um, just be okay with anything that you're gonna tell them. Right now, I'm involved with a couple groups, um, Adirondack, North Country Gender Alliance. Um, they just opened um, well, meetings in Plattsburgh as well as Malone. So I feel really connected to that cause. I would just say it gets it gets better. I don't know what's what their issue, is, like what's going on with them. You know, maybe they're going through what I've been through, but it will get better. And you just have to um, believe. You know, things will get better. I think believe that there's always someone here to talk to, you know, you have great resources in Aquazesta nowadays. It's not like how it was back then when there was like nothing around. There's always someone to talk to. There's always there's great community members who you can talk to and you know just there's always there's always someone to listen to you. You know, you're not alone. Um I would just have to say you know, your friends are like your support system and it's good to have that, you know, even if your parents aren't accepting of it. Um, and just stay strong, it gets better as you get older. And because I used to self harm myself because of it. And thank God I had a support system of really, really good friends to be there and support me and to not think like no one you're not alone you know it's it gets better after time I don't know what I would do without you because you made me the better person I am today and the better man I am.